hello. Um, I have never attended St. Paul's School in New Hampshire. Um, I do not know anyone who has attended MIT, but thank you for assuming it's accepted. <laughs> Um, I do not know what CEF or security or NSA I am stands so for, <laughs> but thank you for thinking I was certified. <laughs> I, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I have never been to Shmukan, but thank you for offering me tickets, everyone. And thank you for the job opportunities, but you do realize I actually majored in fashion design. And I wanted to thank those of you who have offered me dinner. Where are we going tonight? Uh, oh. oh, by the way, who's Robin Sage? Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. No, actually, if you look at him closely with the mullet and stuff, doesn't it look like Kevin Mitnick in the old days? <laughs> but, you know, like, like with my weight. <laughs> All right, so those of you who don't know me, I am the co-founder and managing partner of a company called Provide Security. Um, and what we do is we focus on these types of things using social media to actually track down threats. Um, others that know me know me from the OWASP board in New York, working with Tom Brennan and the rest of them. Um, I was also a trainer for Security Plutch, CEH, ECSA, and also doing red team work. So how many of you are here because you hate me? <laughs> how many people were on Robin's list? Yeah, well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Joe, raise that hand. <laughs> All right, so the whole purpose of the thing was to go back in the old days, all right? So what happened back in the 80s? How many of you guys know who Dick Marchenko is? All right, Dick Marchenko back in the old days was the guy who started uh, Red Cell for Naval Special Warfare Development Group. His whole focus was to prove to people that things can get done, go about them in weird type of ways, ways that piss people off. So that was pretty much the whole premise of this. Um, except this was the new version, cyber ages and stuff. So one of the main focuses was, when we were doing this whole thing, um, there was a couple of people out there who would go, why are you friending all my friends? Okay, perfect example is the whole 2600 crew out in New York. And what they would do is they were like, wow, who the hell is this girl? She's freaking nuts. She's friending all of us. There was even somebody from DC-303 that went ballistic on me. <laughs> what, who went ballistic on me? A what? Pyro's message. I have it in the email. He's like, why are you friending all my friends? I can't take this. <laughs> Um, so what happened was, I was kind of bored after Christmas, I didn't get all the toys I wanted. So, <laughs> it started on uh, the day after Christmas. The whole focus was to be 28 days. Alright, who knows why. Okay, 28 days, because the real Robin Sage is 19 days. And ironically, it happened around that time, and the day the news release came out, two days after that, Robin Sage really ended. And according to the schedule, it starts again on Friday. Anyone knows who what a Robin Sage is? What is it? Right, it's a military training exercise for special forces. Okay, so the goal was to watch the actual propagation of how well this would work on social networks. Um, some of the other things that we're focused on were how people do research. Okay, the one who kept calling me out the most was Chris. <laughs> All right, because Chris knew a lot about me. So the whole focus of the medium was to focus on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, 
um, Google, and Blogger. Um, the reason for the bottom three, Twiddle, Google, and Blogger, were initially just for propagation reasons. All right, if you have a blog on Blogger, you get indexed really fast. Same thing with Twitter. You keep posting tweets with links, you get indexed in the search engines really fast. And then Google with the little profiles, just so every time you typed in Robin Sage, you saw her face. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, most of us know about how this all started. This all started back in was it 2006 with Facebook. Well, actually 2004 with Facebook, not Facebook, MySpace. All right, so with MySpace, everybody started creating all these pages, and everybody wants to be everybody's friends that don't know each other. And the reality of it was, you know, we were all just looking for a free dating site. All right, we all wanted to go out there. We all wanted to go find all these different people, you know, hopefully hook up with them. I know there's a couple of people in this room that still use it that way, where they actually sit there on their Facebook, hmm. There's a conference in this area I'm going to. Who's there? Let me see. Maybe I'll find a hot girl. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe I'll hook up with her. All right. And that was pretty much the whole premise. After that, April of 2008, Facebook surpassed MySpace. Okay. So what that's showing us is different growing trends. You know, different functionality be constantly being added. All right. Today, there's over 5 million users. I know, all you guys want to see all the cool shit, but i got to bore you with some stuff. All right, so LinkedIn, our favorite network. Okay, it was launched in May of 2003 for professional networking. All right, and it has over 70 million users. How many of you are here on LinkedIn? Wow. How many of you have viewed my profile? <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out because after the press release, it's like every day, it's like 20 new people have viewed your profile. Somebody at NSA, somebody at. <laughs> All right. Next, we have Twitter, our favorite friend out there. Say, Chris changed the whole dynamic for Twitter on me. All I was using it for was indexing, and Chris has to start a flame war. All right. <laughs> all right, so basically, all it was really supposed to be used for was indexing, but thanks. But there were some interesting things that uh, I began to learn from Twitter, especially after this project had started. So for instance, I've done some more research after Hope. How many of you went to Hope? Nobody? Yeah, I kind of figured that. So, after Hope, what was the whole big thing? Oh, wow, Julian Assange might show up. All right, so I said, you know what? Let me start bashing WikiLeaks and watch what happens. So in approximately three days of bashing WikiLeaks, I had over 130 more followers. I was like, wow, people love this stuff. All right. Until people started getting into it and knowing what was going on, all right, Facebook, boom, first week, look at that, 60 friends. Then people open their mouth. Week two, it's like, whoosh. week three, by week four, it almost looked like it had died. So what did I do after that? I hibernated, and then I came back. I said, all right, let's see what happens. We did the security community, I got the trust of certain people. Okay. So here are all the boring stats. Um, what's going to happen, and it's probably going to get me in a lot of trouble, because my other drive blew. So some people may see the unredacted version of a few things. And it's not that I'm Julian Assange from WikiLeaks, but there may be some names and things that may scare you. All right. So here's the pattern of what had happened. All right. So after the 28 days were gone, on Facebook there was pretty much about 223 friends, you know, that accepted, dropped, accepted, dropped. Because, you know, after the press release comes out, all of a sudden, guess what? 
202 to 146. It's like, oh no, I didn't click, I didn't click. I had a bot that automatically clicked for me. <laughs> All right, Twitter ironically goes up. Why? I don't know. I'm not that good looking. I mean, I, she's pretty, I'm not. All right. Then LinkedIn, people just got, became more interested. What does he know that I don't know? So the key to the success of this was finding the three people that had the most connections. OK, why is that? Because if you're friends with them, then you start propagating on everybody else's list. This girl might be your friend. Hmm, she looks hot. Yeah, I'm going to friend request her. So we had Dan. Dan covered DNS architecture, a big thing in security. Now we have Jeremiah. Why was Jeremiah picked? All the guys that follow application security. OK? So that was the method to the madness. Then we have this ugly guy. Mark, are you here? OK, I'm safe. Because Jeremiah already threatened to do some like Brazilian jiu-jitsu on me and strongholds and break my arm. And Now, it's not that these guys are insecure. It's just that they're out there. They're out in the public. So guess what? By default, social media is used for networking, building business. Okay? Dan had just started a new business. Mark had just gone to FireEye. And Jeremiah has been building out White Hat. And he's been doing a great job at it. It doesn't mean these people are bad at their job, okay? Because truthfully, there was no information leakage that could cause a problem for these three. So, you have this hot girl here, right? And she wants to be your friend. What are you going to say? You want to connect to her. Why? <laughs> She's hot. All right, what else? Impressive background, right? St. Paul, so she's an elitist snob. Okay, MIT, so wow, she's hot and has brains, rare in the community. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't. All right, sorry. You're right. Where's the Where's the mirror? All right. So, what else do we notice here? Very good. How old was she? How old was she? 25. Possible? No. OK. How old are you? 21. <laughs> OK, so what else do we see out there? How many people here in the intelligence community and plan to beat me up afterwards? Nobody? They're not going to tell me. They're just going to sit out there with a 308 and go. <laughs> Silence or two? Damn, I know who's hitting me out now. Shit. OK, so what else do we see? The reason why I ask people from the intelligence community is they may pick up on this. Gentleman what? The way she looks? Is that possible? Here's a little thing. Everybody in the intelligence community, nobody links their Twitter account to their LinkedIn account. Nobody. So what else do we have here? She worked at the Naval Network Warfare Command. Anyone here work there? Or are you not going to tell me? I was already warned some people would be here if you wanted to kick my ass. All right, why did I pick that place? Uh, maybe because I did time in the Navy and I liked the Navy. All right, there's no real reason why. I had taught the Air Force and I knew what I had to do with them from teaching them. You know, we had to roll back the Security Plus from 2008 version to 2007 so they could pass. And then the Army guys I knew, which ironically, all the guys I taught, nobody accepted 